Hey folks, how you guys doing? Hope you are all having a great Tuesday morning. As usual, I woke up this morning like five minutes before my alarm clock went off and just wide awake. It's, it's been an amazing day. It's just been awesome. Got a lot of stuff going on. The last video that I just published is the lathe cart video from when Matt was here a couple weeks ago. Now, uh, I've had this cart up and running for, uh, I guess the first week of this month. So about Oh man, about three weeks now, and I've been using it a lot. I've turned probably about 30 items, and the shavings, the biggest concern on the video was shavings going inside the cabinet. I knew that was going to be a situation, but I did not think it was going to be a huge situation, which it's not. A little bit of dust gets in there, big deal. You can still grab what you want to grab. Uh, people are afraid of dust, it seems like, on woodworking content, which is weird because it's woodworking, it's what you do, you create dust. Uh, when I made the Polk workbench, uh, there was a lot of concern about dust going inside the holes and just filling up this table. And you know what? Dust goes in there. I can still reach and grab anything inside it, and that's just fine. Uh, dust on the lathe cabinet. Now, understandably so, the lathe does create a tremendous, tremendous mess. That's for sure. Uh, but it's not that bad. So with, with me using the lathe, normally most of the chips and most of the dust are either uh, going to one side or the other side of me or directly on me and the chips that do go on me don't really seem to Bounce down and go into the cabinet. So it's not that bad at all. However um, I built the stand knowing full well that that's not going to be its final orientation I'm going to be doing something for the storage on the inside, but I did not know uh, what exactly I wanted. I've never had a lathe before, a wood lathe. I've never had a wood lathe before, and I didn't know, I didn't really understand all of what was needed. Now that I've had it for about three weeks or so, I completely understand the different live centers, dead centers, and the chucks, and mandrels, and stuff like that. I've got a lot better knowledge for it. So I think I'm going to make some drawers, and I'm not exactly sure if I'm going to do three drawers below the top surface, one in each one of the vertical cubbies, or if I'm just going to make one full stack of drawers on one of the columns, not exactly sure. Um, but that will take place, and uh, a friend of mine is gonna, going to uh, come to the shop in, oh man, I, I forget the months. There's, uh, I've got so much stuff scheduled going forward as far as logistics, me being here, me being elsewhere, other people being here, and all kinds of other stuff. So. Uh, anyway, buddy of mine, Jeff Ferguson, is probably going to uh, come visit for a little bit, and he has a, excuse me, he has a Shapoko 3 mini CNC machine, and uh, I might be able to do something with him to have him cut out some specific trays for the drawers. So if I have one full tray of chucks and uh, chuck jaws and stuff like that, one full tray of the uh, dead center, live center, and stuff like that, that'd be pretty, pretty neat. Um, which is which is funny because when I got rid of the past two lathes that I had, both or not lathes, CNC machines, the last two CNC machines that I had, um, there was a lot of concern that I just hate la hate CNC machines and don't think that they are woodworking, which is completely false. I have a great appreciation for CNC machines; they're fantastic. I just don't enjoy the process of using them. As I've stated previously, I spend a lot of time on the computer, and when the time comes for me to come into the shop and make something, I want to use my hands to physically make something, whether that's pushing something through the table saw, or using hand tools, or whatever. I would much rather do that than program a CNC machine and do the whole cutting process. Still think they're awesome, but just not my cup of tea. Um, man, I got off track. What was I talking about? Oh, the lathe stand. So. <clears throat> Another concern was uh, I need to make something for tools, uh, for the lathe tools. However, um, those of you who follow me on Instagram would already know that I do have some a whole nother lathe tool set up uh, already done. I did it that the action I made it the day after I made the cart myself and Matt Lane. Had a little too much caffeine today. I'm a little wired. Uh, but anyway, I have a stand for all the tools as well. It is working out fantastically. It is working out great. And yeah, just need to uh, make some drawers. Another concern was to add some center support down at the bottom uh, because it's going to sag over time. I don't think that's going to be the case. I've turned some really wobbly stuff as it is and the whole cart's wobbling until I get it turned uh, nice and true. That is fine. I'm okay with that because the cart's not coming off. I have the cart secured, or the lathe is not coming off the cart. I have the lathe secured to the cabinet. 
and I don't think it's going to go anywhere um, and just turn it true real fast. No big deal. Um, I don't want to make this thing too heavy because it's extremely easy to move. Open the garage door real fast, put it out in the driveway, that's what I've been doing, and just let the chips fly. It's a lot of fun. Um, but if I was to add a center set of casters down at the bottom, then that might probably, most likely will create problems as far as uneven ground and such. I, it's not even, it's not sagging hardly at all because uh, the back panel is half inch plywood. Well, there, there's too much conflicting geometry for it to sag any in the middle. Um, I think so anyway. And if there end up, ends up being a problem to where it is sagging, then I can support the center part of the lathe and make sure, hmm, how would I do that? Not support the center part, but support the two outside ends of the, make a little stand for the lathe to sit on on top of this stand, and th that little stand would only have support on the outsides, which would transfer the weight through the outside of the actual big cart stand, and then the little one, anyway, getting off topic here. So that's a complete awesome little rabbit hole to get down into, as you have, may have already noticed. Um, I turned, last night I turned 10 pens for Mother's Day, and some various other gifts. Um, so I think that makes that my, I think I've turned like 16 or 17 pens so far, a couple bottle openers, and just a couple minutes ago, a little um, screwdriver handle. This is one of those that has the, the hex bits that go in here. And this was just a little test, just to see the process of doing so. And I totally expected me to not ever use this because it was, like I said, it was just a test and I was figuring it out. But um, it's together and I can't get this off and there's no glue in there. So I guess I'm going to use it. This leads me to another project that is coming up. Um, I really, 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 I'll, I'll get into this more in an actual video, but I really, really like the tool steel that's in my cobalt chisels. Pleasantly surprised with them and they're a budget set of chisels. However, I can't stand the handles. They're big, they're bulky, they're heavy, too much hand fatigue, blah, blah, blah. I just destroyed one, pulled it right off the handle with it in the vise. I'm not going to say destroyed it, but put the chisel in the vise and pulled the handle right off. So that leads me to another project of making some nice lightweight, uh, this is cherry by the way, maybe cherry handles for my bench chisels. And that'll be a nice, fun little project. And um, yeah, let me see what's next. Last month on my website, I did a giveaway for a number 62 Wood River low angle jack plane with an additional blade that has concluded. I posted the winner's name on uh, that website article, but it was, the guy's name is Ed Doolan, who is the winner. So congratulations to him. Uh, I'll get that out in the mail this afternoon. Oh, I'm actually late. It's going to be first thing in the morning, Tuesday. Um, recording this on a Monday, but it'll be out in the mail. That's really awesome. Thank you guys for all participating in that. And I want to do another giveaway. That was a lot of fun. Uh, a lot of encouraging words and feedback just from that, obviously. Um, so I'm thinking maybe the next one might be a set of David Barron dovetail guides. Maybe not a set. Maybe just maybe two people, but one guide each. That'd be pretty cool, I think. So I'll try and get that in the works and get all that scheduled. And when I do, you guys will know about it. A new episode of the Woodworking Podcast is out. If you guys don't know, myself, April Wilkerson, and uh, Nick Ferry do a little podcast called the Woodworking Podcast every other week. So it's like a two-week release schedule as of right now. Uh, but anyway, <clears throat> uh, we released another episode last Friday. That's always a lot of fun to do that. And uh, I enjoy hanging out with those folks. I've known them for quite some time. And hanging out, doing a little podcast. It's a lot of fun. But anyway, I mentioned in that podcast that another upcoming project I want to make in here is some type of cart. It's going to be an air cleaner cart, basically like a 20 by 20. This is all just what I have in my head. 20 by 20 square that has the motor mounted on it with it blowing off to one side. And then a vertical, four vertical sides that come up from it and have a platform at the top for another tool. So it's basically like a tool stand, but below the platform on all four sides will be four filters. Just a small compact unit that will do the job. And what will be on top is my lathe sharpening tools. I got a lathe sharpening grinder, lathe grinder, a grinder for sharpening lathe tools. It is, <clears throat> I've got a Rikon slow speed grinder. Shortly after I mentioned in this vlog for suggestions, everybody said CBN wheels and everybody said a low speed grinder. So I bit the bullet and that's what I got. And Holy crap, lathe 
whatever has turned into an expense. But anyway, uh, it's a buy once and cry once kind of situation. This should last me forever. Um, that was, let's see, I got that in between and asking the question on this vlog and in between the whole situation with my father-in-law. And it wasn't until um, the day I shot my last vlog that I actually got it put together and up and running and it's doing the job just fine. So I, uh, it's, it's very, I very much appreciate the recommendations and whew, I think I need to quit talking for a minute. So you guys take care, have a great day, and I will see you guys next week or at the end of this week. You guys take care and have a good one.